right guys, welcome back to another MSO underscore review. You guys have been asking for it in the comments, so I figured what better car to talk about. McLaren 675 LT, full bespoke MSO, the whole nine on this car. So we'll dive into some of the differences between the 675 LT to the 650S, and then we'll also talk about what makes this car so special to the Triple F garage and some of the MSO features that we spec'd back in 2016 prior to taking delivery. So first we'll kind of brush over some of the main differences between the LT and the 650 variant. First one being the obvious, it's 666 horsepower, 515 pound foot of torque. I'm obviously a big power gain there in the horsepower numbers. It's 220 pounds lighter than your base 650S. The wing is 50% larger than the active aero wing on the 650S. This giant air brake pays a little homage to the McLaren F1 GT, um, also known as the long tail, that, which they made three F1 GTs, uh, one being a prototype or XP car as they like to call them. Uh, this is my favorite area of the entire car. The carbon rear bumper, the new carbon rear diffuser, and the front splitter is actually 80% larger than found on the 650S, which I think it's around 40% more downforce on this car than the standard 650S. Obviously, we can dive into more of the car-specific spec features, the ultimate being the carbon fiber roof scoop. So at the time, this was around a $45,000 option. I just remember Jordan, his hand was just shaking to check that box at the time. So this is our first brand new custom MSO order from McLaren that we ever had. I'm glad we spec'd it with the roof scoop for multiple of reasons. The scoop cars have held a little bit better value over time. So the sounds you get from it, the driving experience with the roof scoop is second to none. It really makes the car stand out. We're very P1-esque. The carbon front louvers is another MSO option. And from this angle here, I'm sure Bryce can capture it really well. Um, with the MSO full carbon front bumper, you can see the track telemetry camera here. Paired with the carbon roof scoop and carbon mirrors and the louvers, it's just, this car on the road, the road presence this car has is incredible. So to check all these boxes, what, five, six years ago is quite a big step. We've obviously come a long way in the last five or six years with the collection. But what, as Jason likes to say, he likes to say, what is it? Lots of liquidity, lots of fun. I think that's what Jason likes to say. So got the carbon badging. Uh, this car is finished in Aurora blue one of the most underrated colors, in my, in my opinion, from McLaren. You hardly see any Aurora Blue McLarens, and it's a shame because when spec right and nothing but carbon, it, it looks fantastic. Um, we went with the traditional 10-spoke wheels, uh, black calipers to try to take a little focus off of the wheel section and just focus on the car. The carbon side vents, the carbon rocker panels, and we went with the body-colored air brake. We just didn't want to break up the Aurora Blue lines on the side, so we kept the air brake left in the Aurora Blue as well. Let's hop inside. We're going to start the car, turn some AC on, and kind of talk about what exactly this car means to us and why it's so special. So we have jumped inside the McLaren 675 LT. Zero to 62 in 2.9 seconds. It's like a millisecond faster than a 650S. Zero to 125 and I think 7.8, 7.9 seconds. So not too much of a difference there. You can really feel the power difference once you reach the top end of the RPM. Six to, what are we at, 8,500 RPMs. That's when you can really feel the power difference between this car and the 650S. I think the 220 pounds of weight savings, uh, the boosted horsepower that all plays together, the downforce, it all feels like it's quite a bit more powerful once you reach those numbers. But um, no, I, I wanted to briefly talk about how special the, this car specifically is to us. Um, like I said, outside, it was the first MSO spec from new car uh, that we bought from McLaren, and it's been bulletproof. But no, this car has been great. Obviously, the spec is fantastic. Everybody wants to know, you know, how did you guys acquire a Speedtail? How did you acquire a Sabre? First of all, Chad Sear at McLaren of Philadelphia took a chance on us as a customer and he called up, I think it was Jordan or BDD and said, hey guys, how about a 675 LT uh, coupe? About a year later, we took delivery on a really cold, everything seems to be cold and rainy on delivery days. I think I've said that before uh, on, on videos, but um, took delivery on a very cold, rainy day uh, in November, I think it was like November 16th. And Jordan looked at me and he said, get in there, get it, get it off the truck. It was a moment 
I'll never forget. And this car and I have grown over 4,600 miles together now, uh, eight McLarens later. And that's, everybody wants to know why they call you MSO underscore. Do you work for McLaren? Do you have any ties? I don't. Um, just a very passionate person for the brand. I'd like to consider myself a, a big advocate and ambassador of McLaren. Same goes with Jordan, Jason, and his dad. Um, what kind of ambassador? The, the, the number one McLaren ambassador is on the internet, whether that be Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. You can look up whatever you want. Uh, I think the car speaks for themselves, the time and effort we put in back to our dealership as well. Uh, everybody at RDS uh, Motor Group or Auto Group is fantastic. Um, they're like family now. So a little backstory there. I know I, I kind of went on a tangent, but you know, the next car that we got was the 720. And we basically checked every box with that car as well. What that does is it catches the attention of McLaren. So not only are you just buying another car, you're spending money on top of it to make your car even more special through their MSO pr uh, program. Next, Jason, I think, was the one getting the McLaren 650 Can-Am edition, which you'll see in a previous video or after video, I'm not sure, but one of our videos coming out soon. He has a big decision to make on getting a 765 LT or not. He wants the Spider. Then it was the Senna. We were not one of the first 500 customers. We had offered the car uh, just from being a good customer, spending a lot with MSO, you know, kind of playing that game, going to events, things like that. Then the previous owner of the Senna had a P1 for sale, or it was not for sale, it was privately owned. We kind of bothered him to sell it. Um, and that's how we acquired the Fire Genesis Blue P1 that we currently have. 600 LT came next, Papaya Spark with the Fire Genesis Blue Carbon to match the Senna. And then we went out to Pebble Beach. This is where things kind of escalated with the brand. This was the first face-to-face -face with a lot of the corporate guys from England. They were offered a car out at Pebble, which many of you may know is the McLaren Sabre. They came home, flew to Dallas to spec that car. All while this is going on, the Speedtail was announced. So for the last three years, we were pushing to get a Speedtail, even though we were pretty late to the game as far as getting an allocation from new. But after Pebble, after the Sabre, after all that was said and done, they ended up offering us McLaren Speedtail XP3. So that's kind of how we wound up where we're at. Uh, I think we have a lot more of exciting things from McLaren to come, but overall, we couldn't be happier with the relationship that we've built with them. They've been great to us. I feel like we've been great to them as McLaren ambassadors. One key feature I forgot to mention, my favorite, the interior of the roof scoop. Fully functional, track telemetry, air comes in here, funnels out to two sides into the engine bay. Love that feature. Thanks for checking out another review. Catch you guys soon. slouch down you gotta like really well, warm yourself you do you do okay. i don't have that problem i have to go like this so it's been coined the the baby p1 for a while uh until the the 765 has really kind of taken that crown from the 675 but the handling feels a lot like the p1 the sounds you have the turbo spools the waste gates when you let off it's very p1-esque absolutely the p1 is just it's the p1 right you right. just it's hard to even describe, it's such a unique it driving is. experience. And I'll tell you, I haven't driven this for many years, so. Yeah, I, I, remember. Been, I was gonna say, I, I don't remember the last time you've been in this car. It's been years, so I don't even remember what it's like to drive, so I'm excited to. Oh yeah. It does have a great presence on the road. Oh yeah. As we're driving, we're getting a ton of looks, and it's. Yeah, this car really is unique and truly special as you're passing it. And sometimes my favorite part is when we go as a group looking at the other cars oh, and you yeah. see them drive, it's like... It's a lot of fun. It also can be scary though, because like you see them with their cell phones and they're like swimming <laughs> all over the place. Right. Okay, you ready to hot swap? It's hot, hot, was it hot swap? Hot swap. Hot, hot swap. swap. Okay, I feel like I'm ready. Good? I'm good, let's see what this thing can do. difference between this car and your 650. 
this pulls a little stronger. You can feel the it. The higher you get in the RPM. I'm telling you, this it's car so smooth, that just, acceleration. It's just the best. You talk to a lot of McLaren owners, a lot of McLaren ambassadors, they say this is the car. And everything that we've seen and read and hear about the 765, now that's the car. all the way oh. <laughs> I didn't see the GoPro on the window I tried Here, to roll I'll the window it. down I'll hold it.